Joining us now, Dr. Sue Dakotas, back with us again. Uh, thank you for being with us. Again, we've heard so much about Ozempic, a lot of celebrities taking it. So first, for our viewers who don't know, what exactly are these drugs meant to do? And what are they sometimes being used for now? So these drugs have been around about 10 to 12 years, which gives us some, you know, some relief here as far as safety goes. Mm. And they, they get better and better. You know, the original drug was something called exenatide. Then they, they developed something called liraglutide, which is Saxenda and Victoza. And then there was Trulicity, which is Trulicide. And, and then they finally came out with Ozempic. Um, and what they are is they work on the GLP-1 receptor system in the body. And what that does is it delays gastric emptying and also creates a tremendous feeling of satiety, so patients feel really, really full. Mm. It also works on the brain and inhibits appetite from the brain. And the most important thing is that it optimizes insulin. That's why it's so important for diabetics. And even most of us who are overweight have a problem with insulin. Mm. So when insulin can be optimized, people can start burning fat. So you said they've been around for a number of years, and in terms of being safe, the short answer is they're safe. I believe that they're safe if they're used properly. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the key, right? Because so often now we see people just using it for weight loss, people who are not overweight necessarily using it. So let's talk about that. Who is a candidate for this? Are we going down a little bit of a dangerous path with having people who are already considered thin using drugs like Ozempic? That's a very good question. So I practice in Manhattan, and most of my patients are pretty sophisticated. Mm -hmm. And a lot of patients who come in are not really obese but they are overweight and you know it's very important to look at someone's body fat composition someone may seem thin but they have a very high body fat composition so their body fat is higher than it really should be and that can predict insulin resistance and it can also predict future diabetes and other health problems so it's more it's very important to not just look at somebody's BMI right which is their weight divided by height but also their body fat. And with any drug, it's important to point out that drugs, including these, do not replace eating right, eating healthy, exercising, Correct. those types of things. Correct. Uh, and it's very important for people to maintain healthy lifestyle. Mm. But so many people are told, all you have to do is eat healthy. All you have to do is work out. And you should be thin and lean. And that may not be the case. So now it's such an exciting time to be in the field of weight loss medicine because we have answers for people. We can really help them. There has been talks about concerns of a demand for this drug increasing because people want to use it for weight loss, but people don't actually need it necessarily for a medical condition. What do you say to concerns like that? Well, I think that uh, being overweight is a medical concern. You know, you don't want to wait for a patient to become obese. Insulin resistance should be treated because, as we said, those people can go on to develop problems. You don't want people using it for vanity. You know, so if a patient comes into my office and they just need to lose five pounds, I'm not going to put them on one of these drugs. Mm. I now think that's such a key critical differential right yeah. there. Exactly. Let's start with the cost. Are they expensive and are they covered by health insurance? And what happens if, you know, if it's prescribed as something for diabetes versus described for weight management? Do, is there a differentiate? There's a difference there when it comes to uh, uh, coverage? There really insurance? is. I mean, wow. in, the insurance company is probably not going to cover it mm. unless the drug has been FDA approved for obesity. Now, Wagovi has been. And that, the, Wagovi is basically Ozempic, and the, the generic name is semaglutide. That has been approved for obesity. However, getting an insurance company to cover it is something else. They might say, we want you to be of above a certain weight. They're going to request medical records. And actually, I was on the media about this, how now some of the insurance companies are sending warning letters to doctors saying, don't you dare tell us that the patient has diabetes when they don't. Mm, and sure they're looking, and that could be fraud. So if a doctor yeah. trying to help the patient to get it covered says that they have diabetes and they don't, so doctors should not be doing that until the drug is FDA approved for obesity. And the new drug, Monjaro, terzepatide, that works a little bit differently. That's even, that's even more successful for weight loss and diabetes than Ozempic. So if someone is out there struggling with their weight, 
whatever the reason may be, what do you, and they may be considering taking these types of drugs, what do you say to them? What, what are some of the things that they should keep in mind first? Well, they have to. I believe they really should see an obesity specialist and be followed with the body composition scale. Mm -hmm. This way we know that they're not losing too much fat. So you hear these studies, of, uh, stories of people who are losing muscle, you know, the ozempic face, they're getting too thin. Um, that's because they lost too much fat. Because the body on one of these drugs doesn't want to burn muscle. Because it supports insulin, it really does support uh, maintenance of muscle until you lose too much fat. And just so, important to yeah. point out that these are some of the side effects. As always, with every drug come side effects, and you mm -hmm. can see hair loss, a gaunt face. And one other thing we want to point out, Doctor, before you go, we have a couple seconds left here, is that will the weight return after you stop using it? It really shouldn't if the body composition scale is followed. If somebody's highly insul insulin resistant or they're a diabetic, they may need to be on it longer. But in my practice, I have been able to successfully get people off these drugs. And that's why I like losing, using terzepatide, because we can really taper the dose. There are more tapered doses available. So we can bring the patient up and then titrate them down and then watch their body fat. And then if, if someone can then lose a lot of those toxic fat cells and maintain a good exercise nutritional regimen and be followed, they may be able to stay off the drug. Right, Dr. D uh, Sue Dakota.